If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at cottageblogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Welcome to another episode of Vacation Rental Success. This is your host, Heather Bayer. I am delighted to be with you once again, and I am speaking to you from the depths of Alabama, right down on Gulf Shores. I know that uh, some of my listeners actually have properties down here, and it is gorgeous. It really is. I get to walk along the beach every day hike and cycle around the uh, the trails and the state park and and it is just it, you know it it really is idyllic and almost thinking that we should start looking at um at some condos down here i don't know everywhere i go i ha- have a look at the real estate papers and check out the uh, the real estate offices Always thinking, you know, would this would this be the next great place to uh, to buy a property? But uh, but we shall see. It's as it, as it is at the moment. It's the last two weeks of our annual road trip, and um, and we're just making the very most of it. And of course, I finished off last week by going to the VRMA conference in Phoenix, uh, in Chandler, Arizona. And it was a terrific two days. I always love going to these events, not not particularly for the educational content, but I do enjoy that and a bit more of that later. But it's more of the networking. It's catching up with people I haven't seen for a year or or even more, meeting so many new people and just getting into that, just talking vacation rentals and nothing but vacation rentals for, for two or three days. And it, it really was great. So I thought I would uh, use this episode to bring you some of the takeaways, some of the things I, uh, that I got out of the VR, VRMA conference this year. Some of the things that I'm going to go, be going back to uh, Ontario to actually apply to my business. And there were quite a few things that I, I can't wait to get back and actually put into, into practice. And of course, I'm always on the lookout for resources and products and things and services that I can bring to you as independent owners as well. Because there's a lot at the Vacation Rental Managers Association conference that works just as well for independent owners. And in fact, it was interesting that at the conference, there were around six or 700 managers. I think there were about 1,100 people in there in total. But of course, a lot of vendors as well. There's, uh, there's a lot of supplier members to VRMA as well as managers. But I'm reckoning there were probably probably in the region of 700 or so actual managers. And they ranged from companies that were managing in excess of 2,000 properties to one or two people who didn't have any properties at all to manage. But they were there to learn more about the business because this was their ultimate goal to start managing uh, properties on behalf of other vacation rental owners. I want to give you my take on some of the things that I, I saw and heard and some of the vendors that I went to see. Um, but first of all, I just want to kick off with a huge thank you to every person who stopped me at VRMA and said that they listened to the podcast. And, and I could have been, you know, on a number of occasions, I was just walking down a hallway and I'm think I was, you know, often I was talking to somebody else and somebody just came past and then stopped and said, are you, are you Heather Bayer? Do you do that podcast? And I said, yes, I recognized your voice. And, and they stopped and, and we had a few words and I asked, you know, what is it that you like about the podcast and what can we do better? So it was really, really great to meet 
all these people that, that listen. And I just want to give a, a shout out to a few. And I'm, I'm so sorry if I miss anybody that, uh, that I actually stopped and spoke to. I'm so sorry. Um, just, um, add your name to the show notes and I'll, I'll come back and, uh, and give you a shout out. But here's just a quick run through of, of the people um, that I, I met and chatted to and networked with um, that I know listen to the show. So thanks to um, Bill Higgins from A Stay Above the Rest in Austin. Then there was Laurie Clark from Captain Cook Resorts in Hawaii. Now, at the VRMA, there's always this um, reception for new members and and those who have never been to a VRMA conference before, the annual conference. And I have to say, I have gate crashed that party for the last three years. The, the reason being is that I love to meet those new people and know who they are, the people who haven't been to the conference before and just get in amongst them. So that was where I met uh, Laurie Clark from Captain Cook Resorts of, um, and they're based in Hawaii. Um, Laurie is a uh, a podcast listener and it was Laurie it was great to meet you then there was the Conga family Tara Conga her husband and father um their company's called the Conga collection it was it was interesting to talk to 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 the three of them um I love family businesses and they clearly have something really really special going on and Tara I hope you had a good discussion with Conrad O'Connell I certainly did so Mentioning Conrad, yes, I sat down with Conrad for a couple of hours, actually. And we were sort of wrapping up all the final bits and pieces that we're planning on doing to um, my Cottage Link Rental Management website. So I came away with a huge list of things to do. And I hope that's going to be rolling over very, very soon. And I'll let you know when when that actually happens. But uh, but certainly hello to, um, to Tara and the rest of the Conga family. Super to meet you. Paula Vaughan from San Diego. I met Paula in San Diego a couple of years ago, and she is so delightful. We, we spent a couple of hours together on the, um, on the second evening. Uh, we were bussed out to a, um, a, a outdoor barbecue. It was really nice, and I got to sit down with Paula and talk about her goals for the upcoming year. She's, she's had a couple of setbacks recently and I can't wait to see what she's going to be doing uh, with her properties in San Diego over the next couple of years. And um, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun watching you, Paula, succeed because I know you're going to. Thibaut Masson, Thibaut, if you're out there, if you're listening, it's always an absolute pleasure to spend any time at all with you. And uh, it was great to see you in your role at booking.com. Hopefully, we're going to get to see you again if you come to VRSS in 2017, because, of course, we've asked you to speak. We know you do a, such a good job talking about social media and you're really in there amongst it. So we really want you to come along. Um, Derek Eaton and his wife, Sally. Uh, Derek has been on the uh, on the uh, podcast before. And if you recall, Derek runs a property management company in Seattle called Seattle Oasis Vacation Rentals. And it's a very unique type of company because they don't just manage the properties. They virtually take them over and use their own particular brand of magic to furnish, decorate in a way that they know attracts their particular demographic. And it's Sally who is the brains of the design and decor operation. So I've asked Sally to join me on the podcast in a couple of weeks' time, and uh, you'll be able to hear what, what she has to say about how best to furnish, decorate, and stage a property for rental. Uh, Fred Cicera, I'm not sure I got your last name correct, Fred, but uh, we met in San Diego as well. Uh, Fred runs a company called Getaway Vacations in Vermont, and it was an absolute delight running into him again. Um, <laughs> we, the, the last time I spoke to Fred, we were on a boat in San Diego Harbour, and uh, 
again, just talking vacation rentals. It's uh, it's amazing the people you meet and the places we get to go to. And then finally, is this finally? No, uh, not quite. Jonathan Murray from um, My VR. I've been wanting to get John on on the podcast for a couple of years, and he's been a little bit elusive. But it, I pinned him down uh, at, uh, at VRMA, so we will be getting him on talking about um, about websites. And uh, my VR has has done a few changes over the past year or so, and and we'll be talking about that. I also got to uh, connect with Brad Huber from Parakeet. You may remember I talked to Brad about um, automation fairly recently, and and I got to sort of play with a couple of the, uh, the the automation products that uh, that they have um, and check them out so it was it was really great to connect with Brad because it, it's good to talk to people over over distance but to actually talk face to face and and have some of these things shown to you makes such a huge difference I also want a, 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 sh- a quick shout out to a couple of other companies that were there um, that I, I know and love, and that was Logify, Rentals United, and and Booking Pal, all of whom are in the channel management business. And I'm going to be putting links to every one of these people and the the companies they represent because you know it's really important to get it out there. We're also looking um, at a lot of these providers and product uh, developers to come to VRSS 2017. So they can bring all their demos and their products and and their 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 selves <laughs> themselves to to our event and and talk to the independent owners who are going to be there. So my visit to VRMA was you know, it had a couple of purposes, one of which was to um, network for my own property management company. The other was to look around and see, you know, who is going to be a good match for the Vacation Rental Success Summit? Because not everybody will. You know, some of the, the big reservation management companies are not going to be that good a fit. But there are a lot of other companies that we really only ever see at at these big management events, vacation rental management events, that would be a fantastic fit for us as independent owners. And I'm going to be mentioning, you know, a couple of these uh, as we go through this episode. So I just broke this episode down into a, a, a couple of, of sections. And I want to talk about guest gifts because I talked to uh, a couple of people who are involved in creating... Um, gifts that that we give our guests. I know not everybody does that, not everybody agrees with it, but it's uh, it, it was really interesting to see uh, a couple of those companies represented at VRMA. We're going to talk a little bit about technology, about social media and insurance because there were a number of insurance providers there. And of course, insurance providers in general are dealing with independent owners because every property has an owner and that property has to be has to be individually insured. So I had some good conversations with some insurers. And then if I can if I think about anything else I shall add it at the end. When I arrived at VRMA on the Sunday uh, most of the vendors were setting up and one who had already set up and really the the vendor showcase didn't open for another few hours but but Jason Halliburton from bringfido.com was there. He was standing behind his booth. So I thought, well, this is a good kickoff because I, you know from the things I've said before about being pet friendly, that it, it's, a, it's a big niche. It's huge. And certainly from my point of view, my perspective as a property manager in Ontario, I would say that um, 65 to 70 percent of our guests that actually come and stay at our properties bring a dog. A smaller proportion want to bring their cats. And, you know, cats are 
a little bit different. Um, many, many owners who will accept a dog are not happy with accepting cats. And, um, and I'm leaving that one out for the time being. So I just want to talk about this, um, this Bring Fido and pet gifts. Gifts that when your guests arrive, they, they receive a, a little bag with gifts for their pet, not a bottle of wine, not a, a tray of snacks or things that you can normally just go and buy in a, in a supermarket, which I, I struggle to, to see what the value of that is, you know, either as a guest or, or as an owner, you know, it almost seems to be paying lip service to being hospitable and providing a, 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 a gift. I'm not sure what your take on is it on it is. I'd love to hear from you about that. But it's a bit like going to a hotel and finding a chocolate on a pillow. You know, it's not going to make me love the hotel anymore because that chocolate's on the pillow. Because there doesn't seem to be a huge amount of thought that's gone into it. But I've been to a vacation rental where we've taken one of our dogs and there was a gift a, a guest gift for my pet. And I was blown away by that. It was a little bag and there was a frisbee in it and a tennis ball and a locally made homemade treats. You know, you see a lot of these little um, pet stores locally that do homemade treats. Um, Because once again, anybody can buy a box of Bonio. And and I have to say, I, I don't give my dogs that that type of um, that type of treat because they're both fat enough as it is. And uh, and feeding them more um, of of those types of and I've, I'm doing quotation marks here treats um, doesn't do them much good at all. So, but I do love the idea of of going to a local pet store and getting some of these homemade treats, which are low in sugar, they're low in fat, they're made with all natural products. You know, that's what I give to my dogs, and actually getting one of those in a pet gift pack was just, I just thought it was so remarkably thoughtful. So the display that Jason was showing at the bringfido.com booth was a whole array of different types of gift bags. Similar things with with tennis balls and squeaky toys and things for, for different size dogs, small balls for small dogs and big ones for big dogs. It, it just sparked off the idea for me that I'm, I'm going to start doing that more in my property, my own property when I get back, because every one of my guests has a pet. Everyone brings a dog, if not two or sometimes three, because it's, you know, I, it's a very pet friendly property. And I want people to enjoy bringing their dogs and for them to have a really, really good time. So, so I'm talking to, um, I'm talking to Jason about this and then find bringfido.com is a listing site. It's a specific listing site. It's a niche site for people who want to take their dogs on vacation. And, uh, and I do urge you to go and take a look at bringfido.com. There's a lot of really good information on, um, on listing with a, a, a niche site such as, uh, such as Bring Fido. So just talking to Jason got me thinking about uh, what, what I could do for my guests at Kingfisher. And, and I'm going to be talking to all my cottage owners and just, just explore some ideas on, on how we could make the, the whole um, issue of preparing a gift basket or a gift bag for a uh, pet owning family much easier to do. So let me know if that's something you uh, you already do. I have to say that pet owners are always so grateful and and just wonderful to have around, and they are some of our most loyal repeat guests. It just seems when it's you know families with with lots of children, they tend to they they tend to change um, their destination every year. But sometimes when it's just a couple with a dog or two, 
or friends who come with their their pets, they seem to come back over and over again. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's because once they've found somewhere where their pet is really welcome, they just feel that they're just going to come back and do it all over again. So so that was um, that was bring Fido. Staying on the topic of guest gifts, there was another. Uh, exhibitor called Beach House Logos at beachhouselogos.com. They they come to just about every Vacation Rental Managers Association conference. I've seen them several times, and they are um, that they create promotional products. So. Once again, if you're thinking about leaving a gift for your guests, then this is a superb company to take a look at because they understand the vacation rental industry. It's not the same as just looking at any old promotional products. I mean, these guys know what what they're doing and what guests um, really like. So whether whether you want to get a collection of, of tote bags, and I love that idea of giving my guests a tote bag with my cottage name on it because people are going to use that over and over again. So take a look at beachhouselogos.com. They are uh, another company I have approached in, in the hope that they will come and uh, exhibit at VRSS 17 because I think you would love to see all the different types of promotional products they can do. All these things that people can take home and give them that continued memory of staying at your property and to, to the point where other people will ask them uh, about you know the mug or the cap or the t-shirt or whatever you've um, you've you've given to them so uh, so yep take a look at those their url their website address is in the show notes okay so that was guest gifts now i want to talk a little bit about social media because I should say I, I did go to some of the educational sessions, not a huge amount of them. And sadly, I, as is usual, I did walk out of a couple, not because they were particularly bad in any way, but they, they just didn't quite live up to the promise of the title. It's one of the reasons why we are so specific when we're, when we're asking speakers to come and deliver at... VRSS. We want to make sure that the educational content is really tailored to your needs. And I know it's difficult at VRMA because the audience could be, as I mentioned before, it could be the person who hasn't even started their company yet, or it could be the person with 2,000 plus properties. So so it's got to be a little bit more generalized. Well, there were a couple I went to that really, a couple of sessions I went to that really stimulated me, motivated me into wanting to do something when I when I got back to the office. And the first one was a presentation by April Burns of Intercoastal Net Designs. Now, April and her team uh, create wonderful, wonderful websites, m normally for property managers. And in fact, that's where I first met Conrad, Conrad O'Connell, because Conrad used to be a part of the uh, ICND team. And I've always been so hugely impressed with that company. They're, they're bright, they're, they know their stuff. And, and they are, you know, it is, it is a web design company that is firmly based in in vacation rentals. And, and I have to say that having a website built by ICND is not the cheapest. But you know, if you're looking for something that's going to be with you for the next 10 years, and you break the cost down over 10 years, and the fact that their support is fantastic, and their knowledge is fantastic, it may very well be worth you taking a look at them. But I went to um, April's session, uh, which was on social media, because that, that's a great part of how ICDN put a website together, is, is to make sure that all the connections are there and that content is a big part of, of the site. And April was talking generally about Facebook. She was just talking about posting, how often you should post, what you should post, when you should post 
and and how to organize it. And what I came away with from April's session was the importance of just putting together a very simple editorial calendar. By editorial calendar, I mean just a calendar with a post for every single day. And she said, you know, that's all you need to do is one post a day, but you can pre-prepare them. And you should always use photos, always use great photos in your posts. Your posts could be you know, a whole variety of different posts, and, I, and I'm not going to go into that uh, in great depth. But a couple of examples would be just a, a post that's talking about an event that's happening. A post that mentions a new attraction or a new restaurant that's opened in the area. Very, very minimal posting on new properties. You know, you might want to, when you get a new property, you might want to to post a really great photograph of it, but that's all you need to do just that once. So you have a range of types of Facebook post. And then in your editorial calendar, which could be a printed sheet, it could be something you do online for every day, just write in what that post is going to be. And then you can use something like Evernote to create the posts. And you can do that at the start of the week, just have one day in the week, take an afternoon where you create all your posts for the upcoming week. And I just... You know, this is not new. This this is really not new at all. But it just struck me that I hadn't. I I'd spent time looking at a whole range of editorial calendar software, when really all you need is to just have a a grid from one to thirty or one to thirty one, and just write in the topic of each post. So it does seem simple. It's common sense. But that is what I came away from, from April's incredibly good. And I have to say her presentation was really, really good. It had me sitting there right the way through to the end. And I didn't want to leave. And it takes a lot to get me to stay to the end of any presentation. So thanks, April, for that. We have asked you to come and speak to us at VRSS 17, because you are so darn good. So hopefully we'll be adding you to our list of speakers. I didn't get to see Thibaut's, Thibaut Masson's um, session also on social media, but just a little, you know, double back to Barcelona in uh, at the end of February, beginning of March, when I went to the VRMA Europe conference and saw, um, saw Thibaut speaking there. Uh, Thibaut's a really great Instagram expert. And uh, yeah, I would, uh, we, we've asked Thibaut to come along to um, VRSS2 to talk about Instagram and how you can create uh, great Instagram uh, accounts to promote your business. So let's move on to insurance. Just this exciting, exciting topic of insurance. Um, there were a lot of insurance providers, you know, the big ones like Travel Guard and CSA were there. But also a couple of companies was Red Sky, which I didn't go and speak to. And I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why I miss Red Sky. But on the Vacation Rental Formula Facebook group, there's been a little discussion about a company called, um, called Proper, Proper Insurance. And there were several people on the group who said, yes, I've insured with Proper and I'm really happy with uh, with their services. So I was delighted to see Proper there and went and had a chat with them. Um, also spoke with the guys at Rental Guardian, rentalguardian.com. It's always interesting for me to talk to anybody about insurance because, you know, I'm coming from Canada and I'm asking for insurance for my Canadian clients. And uh, it's not always as forthcoming. You know, they all, they all say, oh, yes, we really want to, uh, we really want to get into the Canadian market. And it's, yes, you've been saying that for the past five years. Rental Guardian are, uh, you know, are dealing with Canadians and I'm eager to talk to them about some of the products they're offering, one of which, which is a, a, a product you can sell to your guests, which is a cancel for any reason policy. 
Now, I love selling travel insurance to my guests. The reason being is that years ago, before we started selling insurance, it was really tough when somebody would call up and say, you know, somebody's got ill in the group or my a relative has passed away and we can no longer come for our vacation, particularly when it's it's a week before and you know you're not going to be able to rent that space again. And before we were selling travel insurance, it was it was really tough to say, no, we can't give you your money back. But now we have the option of offering travel, uh, travel insurance and guests can either take it up, they can purchase travel insurance or, or they don't. They make their choices and take the risk if they're not going to buy it. And, and it has made life a lot easier for us when, when we have the, have the call to say, you know, Auntie Sue passed away and we've got to go to the funeral next week and, and we, have to, uh, we have to cancel our vacation. And we just simply say, well, do you have, if, you're tra- if you have your travel insurance, then you should be covered and you can claim back the full amount from the travel insurance company. And I have to say, if, if they chose not to buy travel insurance, I feel so much better at saying, no, I'm sorry, we can't give you any money back because we gave you the option and, and you made that choice. Um, not that I'm going to say that to them, but we just simply ask, you know, did you, did you buy travel insurance or, um, or not? But we do often get the, uh, the, the phone call that says, you know, my, my, my husband's just lost his job and we just cannot afford to go on this vacation anymore. And this is often after they've paid their full deposit and we're just about to ask them for their, for their final balance. So some of these calls, you know, they, they may or may not be genuine, you know, husband may or may not have lost his job. But in general, we are not re- re- refunding a, a deposit unless we can re-rent the, uh, the vacation rental period. But with the cancel for any reason policy, then the guests are going to be able to get their, their money back. And I just love this idea. I love this idea of offering that. It's a little bit more expensive, but you know, you can then say to them, here's, here's this insurance. It's cancelled for any reason. If you wish to purchase that, you're going to be covered if if your husband loses his job or if if one of the kids has to go and spend time, as this has happened, one of the kids has to go to summer school instead of going on vacation. So the other thing we are discussing with Rental Guardian is damage insurance and and how best that can be offered and i and i'm going to get into a more in-depth discussion with them about how damage in damage claims are paid out um because of after, after last week's episode on damage there were a couple of um a couple of comments if you want to go back and look at the show notes and the comments um some people had mentioned that actually making a claim on on an insured uh, policy is a little bit more difficult than uh, than you might imagine. So we will be having a a guest from one of the insurance companies fairly shortly to talk about things like I want to talk about liability. I want to talk about how how good these damage uh, these damage plans are, and you know how how feasible is it for an independent owner to uh, to sell an insurance policy. So the other thing um, I went and, and looked at was a lot of the technology. And I'm, I think I've mentioned it, it before. It, it always blows me away that, that some of our, our rental properties under our management are in the 5,000 plus a week bracket, which you know, may, may not seem a lot, but for Ontario, it's quite a, a high fee. Access to those properties is quite often the keys in the barbecue or the keys under the mat. These are the high value properties. And then you get to the, the property that's 800 to 1,000 a week where there is a lockbox on the shed where you open that lockbox and you get a key to another lockbox, which will give you the key to the door. We deal with a huge variety of different ways of accessing properties. Now, something I really, really want to do for 2017 is to begin to standardize all my managed properties and have everybody using 
the same or a similar system. And I came across you know, several companies that are, you know, Cabba Locks is one, Parakeet is another, and there are a couple of other um, other vendors at VRMA who are offering the um, the sort of locks that can be managed remotely. That's a long way of going around saying, you know, I'm, what I want is to be able to remotely manage locking devices on our properties, which means that when when we have four. Um, 180 people going into a cottage on a Saturday afternoon at four o'clock and we start to get the calls saying, I can't get in. I want that to be a thing of the past because I want to be able to control all these locks myself. So I'm going to be trialing one of these locks on my own door, allowing me to generate codes that will expire. So after a guest has left, the code expires, the new one takes its place. Um, there's a lot of different variations. And, and I, what, I, what I'd like to do is, is to do a comparison uh, on all those different locks and do a blog post on it. So that's something that um, I'll be working on fairly, fairly shortly. I didn't get to talk to the people who have the Noise Aware app. Um, we mentioned that when I was talking to Matt Landau a few weeks ago and and he had uh, put forward noise aware as being one of the one of the up and coming apps and products that he 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 liked and and thought we should we should look at so noise aware were there, but unfortunately when I went past the the booth the um, the vendor wasn't there so I just took away some stuff I'll be looking at noise aware and perhaps adding that in to uh, you know to, to a bit of piece on, on technology that I'll I'll do in the next uh, the next few weeks so finally um some something else I always like at these shows is getting to talk to the linen providers now HD supply is a major sponsor of the VRMA conferences um I don't get to spend much time with um with HD supply preferring a couple of the smaller vendors and I got to you know I, I got to feel some samples of sheets and and uh, linens and talk to them about sort of the changing nature of how we make our beds and it was really really fascinating you know I'm a, I'm a huge fan of um, Alana Schroeder's distinct uh, the dis the distinguished guest and uh, the, you know the the linens that she supplies I I did order quite a lot of, of linens and they've they've been put to a lot of use and are really durable and last such a long time and still look good. I want to get a little bit on my soapbox about linens and beds over the next couple of months because I think this is becoming more and more of a key issue for guests when they get to a property. They want the beds to look fantastic. They want the sheets to feel good. And I think I told you about um, a trip I did to Exuma a couple of years ago where I climbed into the bed on the first night after a very long day of traveling and there were holes in the sheets and the sheets were mismatched and they were clearly the owner's um, cast offs. You know, it, it was the it was the sheets that the owners didn't use anymore that they were now putting out onto their vacation rental beds that is just not on. You know, I'm probably preaching to the converted here. Those of you who are listening to me, you know that beds play an enormous part in the overall satisfaction of a property. If a guest doesn't get a good night's sleep and they don't feel that they're in quality linens and they feel really comfortable and they, they feel that quality, they are not going to be happy. You know, the hotel I was staying in had that the linens on the beds were really, really comfortable. You climbed in at night and you actually felt this, you know, felt enveloped in quality. And I just, I just love that feeling. So it was really good to, um, you know, to spend some time with, with the two vendors that were there at VRMA that, uh, that had brought along a lot of samples and gave me some really good ideas on, on how to do the beds. So, as I said at the beginning of this, I'm going to put everything, all the links to everybody that I've mentioned here will be in the show notes. So please go along, have a look. 
let me know if, if you're coming to VRSS and you want to see some vendors there, you want to, to be able to go and do this, go and feel the products, talk to the suppliers. Let me know. Let me know what you're looking for because we, uh, we're actively seeking exhibitors at the moment and, uh, and I'd love to hear what, what you want. So that's that's it for now. Some of my key takeaways from VRMA uh, 2016. Um, 2017 venue is going to be in Orlando. And um, I think I'm going to uh, get booked for that pretty early. And and remember, you know, if you've got a couple of pro- a couple of properties that you manage, you should really think about membership of the VRMA. It's, it is our organization. It's the organization of property managers. And, and I highly recommend that, that you join, you come along next year. I'm probably going to have a get together. So it would be fabulous to see you there. Okay. For now, from my campground in Alabama, um, I wish you a very, very good day and we'll look forward very much to visiting with you again very, very soon. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business.